In this session, we're going to start looking at learning analytics. Specifically, we want to look at what are learning analytics, why are they gaining attention in educational settings the way they are today, and what are some of the background factors that influence their adoption. Anything that we do in digital environment creates a trail of data that is of interest to a range of organizations. And these organizations could be a grocery store that wants to better understand the purchasing patterns of its customers. It could be an online retailer that wants to understand how the use of certain colors influences purchasing decisions. Or it could be a system such as Facebook that wants to understand how individuals uh, connect to each other or use the tool sets and what kinds of changes might be needed within the platform so that they better are able to target individual users. So ultimately, what we do in a digital space, whether it's on a smartphone or in a browser, creates a data trail that is of interest to someone. The difficulty, though, is that these numerous data trails that are generated presents scientists in a range of fields difficult challenges, but it's that we have too much data and we simply aren't able to understand what that data is. Now, in some cases, that data is simply in the form of uh, research publications that are being generated. In other cases, it could just be the trail of data that's generated in a learning context that goes unanalyzed, and we don't have the ability to understand what's happening and the opportunities that exist. So the key issue, whether in science or whether in a learning process, is that information overload is a challenge that pre prevents scientists at a broad level from making key discoveries, but also individuals or teachers from being able to understand critical learning activities. And so as a result, in order to confront this abundance of data, there's been a rapid increase in the development of a range of fields that include data mining and analytics. In a 2011 publication, McKinsey and Company, this publication was titled Big Data, the Next Frontier of Innovation, Competition, and Productivity, articulated there were a series of substantial gains that could be made from a number of sectors through the use of analytics. Areas such as healthcare, professional services, government had the opportunity for significant gains. Now, if you see the little green arrow that I added to the bottom of the screen, that's educational services. This was a sector that in 2011, at least, they felt was not ripe for use of data. And in their words, it was largely due to the difficult organizational procedures around collecting, getting, sharing data, and some of the bureaucratic processes that are in place in education. Regardless of that somewhat dismissive view of data in the educational process, it's clear that the data that's collected about us as users or the data that we in turn collect about learners in our schools or in our universities reveal a lot. In certain instances, they can reveal some of our uh, sentiments, the attitudes that we might hold. They certainly communicate social connections, the people that we are a part of. And if you're familiar with the thinking of Eric Schmidt, uh, the former CEO of Google, his view was that once Google is able to anticipate what we're going to search before we search it, that's when Google will have fully succeeded. The data trails that we generate them produce a range of opportunities to understand human behavior for marketers, advertisers, and I would like to argue educators as well. Now in fairness, there are some significant challenges that exist. These challenges uh, range on one hand from privacy and ethics, which is a topic that we're going to spend more time looking at later in the course, but also that there are certain elements that just can't be quantified. There are certain aspects of a learning process, there are certain elements in a social interaction that as of yet at least we're unable to quantify. One example though of the potential failure of data and the use of data was an illustration Douglas Bauman who left Google partly because he had some concerns about the heavy analytics lens that was being brought to bear on particular challenges was uh, Google had difficulty deciding between two shades so they ran testing on 41 shades of blue to see which one would perform better. So in a sense it's a little unnerving to have this view that properly done data can exceed or surpass human judgment. I think there's something that we inherently push back a little bit as individuals when we're confronted with this kind of a narrative. So it's worth emphasizing that we need to recognize the limitation of data and analytics and realize the importance of the social practices and procedures that are often involved in the educational process. But setting aside some of those reservations, 
we'll turn to a definition of learning analytics that was first used by the Society for Learning Analytics Research in the inaugural conference in 2011. And that is essentially that learning analytics are the measurement, collection, and analysis of reporting of data. Specifically, we want to look at learners and the context of learners because we want to better understand what's happening with learners, the environment they're involved in, and how can we improve that to make a better impact on the individual students, but also to help learners or the teachers themselves improve their teaching practices and ultimately, of course, to give institutions the data, the feedback that they need in order to improve their practices and how they support students and how they support teachers or faculty as well. There's a significant upside to the use of data in the educational experience. Art Grazer from University of Memphis uh, made a statement that through the use of analytics, there is an escalation of the speed of research on many of the problems that exist in education. And as we go through the particular details in the course over the next eight weeks, we'll look in more detail at how some of those advances are being made and the particular elements of analytics, the activities that a analyst and a learning analytics analyst engages in as they're trying to make sense of the kinds of uh, data that they're confronted from students that might have participated in a learning management system in a series of blog posts or just data that was collected observationally. Ultimately then we can do analytics work around everything from social interactions to the types of space that individuals are part of to their use of uh, systems such as an LMS or a learning management system also to start adapting and improving the content and the learning experience for each individual learner. Certainly as we see the growth of additional analytics opportunities such as the use of wearable computing, we can expect to gain greater understanding to the factors that contribute to effective learning and ultimately how we can improve our teaching processes.